Hello and welcome to True Crime Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. From the outside, Sabrina and Robert Lamone's marriage looked picture perfect. The two lived in sunny California with their two kids and were always described as being outgoing and friendly. Robert and Sabrina's marriage took a step in a new direction when they became swingers with their best friends. But soon Sabrina became convinced that Robert was having a one-on-one affair with another woman, Kelly. Well, needing some distraction from her marriage and her problems, Sabrina got a job at Costco, and it was there that she met a handsome 22-year-old firefighter named Jonathan Hearn. The two fell head over heels over each other, and they began an illicit affair, even though Sabrina was 11 years older than her new boyfriend. Soon, Sabrina and Jonathan's love affair turned deadly when they plotted to kill Robert, her husband. On August 17th of 2014, Jonathan went to the rail yard where Robert worked and shot him to death. In 2017, Jonathan agreed to plead guilty to several lesser charges in exchange for testifying against Sabrina. Prosecutors dropped the first degree murder charge against him, and he was sentenced to 25 years and four months in prison. A year later, Sabrina was convicted of murder, conspiracy, solicitation to commit murder, and other crimes. She was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. A judge denied her appeal for a new trial. In 2020, Sabrina's attorney argued that her conviction should be overturned, but she is still serving time in a California state prison. Now let's take a look back at the case that shocked a small community and the family and friends of everyone involved. They were, as the saying goes, meant to be. Really just in love with each other, in love with their kids, and seemed like a stable, normal family. But peel back the layers of Robert and Sabrina Lamone's perceived stable, normal facade, and you'll find deep cracks in the marital armor, starting with some risky sex on the side with neighbors. It was usually Sabrina and I, and then we would go have sex with our husbands in the same room. Add a young, impassioned evangelical firefighter to fan the flames. He was a bit sheltered. And you just might get the sense that this is not going to end well. Car accident and fire were two of the things that were discussed, but they ultimately decided on poison. This is the coldest, most calculating killer I've dealt with in my entire career, and I've done a lot of them. I can see how that looks really, really good. It sounds like a dating site cliche, but everyone in the Mojave Desert town of Hellendale, California, admired and envied the Lamones seemingly special bond. They were best friends, they were partners. Robert was the spark that got the party started. Robert's very outgoing, um, very friendly. A spirited outdoor people person who worked as a first responder for the railroad. He was at the river, so he loved the water. Sabrina, a vivacious blonde who could disarm with her charm. Everywhere we go, she, she puts a smile on everyone's face. Lydia, when Robert first brought Sabrina into the family, how did everybody feel about her? She seemed to have a lot of love and compassion. She was very friendly. One vow exchange and two children later, the Lamone family appeared solid and intact. But in time, Robert and Sabrina's lifestyle began to exceed the boundaries of traditional marriage. They decided to open up the relationship. And at that point, she went along with it to make him happy. She was a caretaker, that's for sure. Sabrina's family told Crime Watch Daily the swinger lifestyle took its toll on Sabrina. She did not want to have an open relationship anymore, and he wanted to, and it was a battle in their marriage. The free-loving crowd included Sabrina's best friend, Kelly Bernatine, and her husband, Jason. But there were some suspicions that Kelly and Robert were allegedly having a private one-on-one affair behind the scenes. He'd come home and actually start telling Sabrina what Kelly had just done that was so awesome sexually. And she'd go, I don't want to hear this. Sabrina, her family tells me, was feeling tormented, lonely, and desperate. He wasn't there for her in the emotional way that she needed. With the kids in school, Sabrina got a part-time job at the local Costco. 
At least it was a distraction, and she could earn a little money on her own. One day, a fresh-faced 22-year-old firefighter named Jonathan Hearn walked into the store while Sabrina was on the job. There were sparks. And even though their lives were worlds apart, the attraction could not be denied. She was 11 years older than him. Um, he was a bit sheltered. He was homeschooled, but very educated. Um, grew up in a religious home. Had a good family. Jonathan was intrigued. She lived that other lifestyle that he was never exposed to. But Sabrina needed an emotional connection. Jonathan turned out to be just that guy. Sabrina lured him in with sexy snapshots in lingerie and love notes. This one reading, you are so special to me, and I'm truly grateful to have found you, signed by Sabrina with hearts. She was getting attention from somebody who told her, you know, you'd be the only person in my life. You know, I'd only want you. I would never do those things to you. And, and you know, it makes someone feel good after not getting attention for however, you know, many years. And Jonathan appeared head over heels in this phone message to Sabrina. I love you so much. Sabrina, you have changed my life and changed my heart. Sabrina wanted no one to know of the affair. She was admired in the community as a good wife and devoted mother. She wanted to keep this image of a perfect family. Robert Lamone is ambushed, gunned down in the dark of night at the remote railroad facility where he was working the graveyard shift. Robert was there all alone and now lays dying in Tehachapi, California, about 85 miles from his home in Hellendale, shot twice. It was a shoot to kill attack. He was struck in the, in the face and it, it traveled through and exited the neck. The other one was a shot in the chest it uh, went up into the jaw area and lodged in the brain. A grief-stricken Sabrina posted a loving tribute to her husband while struggling to stay strong for their two young children. No one wants to see their children in that much pain. Given Robert's unconventional lifestyle, it's hard to tell just who had it out for him. A jealous husband? A jilted lover? Don't know where we're going next. We were still looking for leads. There was no relevant forensic evidence at the crime scene. All Kern County detectives had was this surveillance tape of a shadowy figure roaming the crime scene. The subject was wearing some heavy clothing and also walked with a limp. And footage of someone with a similar build on a motorcycle at a nearby gas station and convenience store right around the time of the murder. Crime scene photos show Robert's office looked as if it had been ransacked. Was this a random attack? They thought maybe it was a, a, a robbery or something to that effect. So there was a lot of stories going on. Sheriffs offered a $100,000 reward. Even that wasn't tempting enough for anyone with good intel to come forward. And they all pretty much led us to a dead end. This is a picture taken last night before my brother was murdered. The unknown is almost as painful as the grief for loved ones. It left a lot of open questions, and, and nobody seemed to answer or give us the answers to those questions so that we could heal. A few weeks later, Detective Robert Meyer gets an interesting call from Jason Bernatine. Remember, Jason and his wife Kelly were best friends with the Lamones, friends with benefits. Jason uh, wanted to provide me with a couple text messages that he received uh, from a subject by the name of Jonathan Hearn. Yes, the same Jonathan Hearn involved in an affair with Sabrina Lamone. But why on earth would the young fireman be texting his married lover's best friends? He basically was wanting to ask for forgiveness um, for how shameful he had been. No, it's not a murder confession. Jonathan was actually texting a rather curious apology for having an affair with Sabrina. But why? I obviously thought it was very strange that he'd be apologizing for that, but I had some work to do. So I started looking into Jonathan Hearn. Detective Meyer's next move? A visit not with Jonathan, but with the adulteress herself, Sabrina Lamone. I asked her if there were any issues in the marriage, such as 
infidelity or a boyfriend or girlfriend or anything like that. And she denied that and she said it was great. Her and Rob had a great marriage. Nothing like a bold-faced lie to energize a lagging criminal investigation. But the ever image conscious Sabrina may have been deceptive for a reason that doesn't involve killing her husband. I don't think she wanted to paint Rob in a negative light or herself in a negative light for the children in this terrible time. She didn't want her kids to know about the open relationship and how like they were both having affairs. Detective Meyer keeps digging for clues and hits on some gold. Sabrina had purchased uh, what is commonly referred to as a burner phone. They started communicating with that. In fact, in the five months leading up to Robert's death, the illicit lovers exchanged 7,000 voice calls and text messages on their throwaway phones. That was very suspicious. Adding to the suspicion, Sabrina suddenly goes underground, cutting off Robert's entire family, even refusing to let them see the children, and for no apparent reason. It broke the heart of Robert's sister, Lydia, but it also raised suspicion. Why are you hiding, Sabrina? You know, if you didn't do anything wrong, why are you not communicating or talking to us? Sabrina may have sidestepped her family, but she can't beat the badge. Cops are listening to calls between Sabrina and her young lover. A judge approved 24 hour surveillance and telephone wiretaps of conversations with Jonathan. The subject matter? Jonathan's paranoia. There's a truck that definitely, uh, And stunningly, a prayer for salvation, not the kind in the afterlife, but the one in the courtroom. The couple prayed that God would steer the criminal investigation away from them as suspects. While the calls don't reveal any direct evidence, one might detect a certain consciousness of guilt in their conversations. God, this is, this is what you, I guess you really do want me to be with them. But cops needed more, and it so happens they've been able to gather the incriminating goods. When they search Jonathan's house, they find a motorcycle helmet and gloves like the one spotted in that surveillance video close to the crime scene the night Robert was killed. Based on Jonathan Hearn owning a motorcycle that was similar to the motorcycle that was around the scene around the time of the murder, based on his relationship with Sabrina Lamone, also him owning uh, firearms that were similar to the caliber that killed Robert Lamone. And there's more. Sabrina stood to gain a sweet payout from Robert's railroad pension. Cops are convinced Sabrina and Jonathan had the means, motive, and opportunity to get Robert out of the picture. Three months after the cold-blooded murder of Robert Lamone, Kern County homicide detectives are convinced they've got enough evidence to make cases against Jonathan Hearn and Sabrina Lamone. Hearn is arrested at his firehouse where he's on duty, and Sabrina Lamone is on her way to her children's school where she's scheduled for a parent-teacher conference. The whole thing's ridiculous. If you know Sabrina at all, I mean, she's, I love her to death. She's amazing. She's got the biggest heart, but she's no mastermind. She said, I, why would I, you know, want him dead, or why would I want to, I had the best of both worlds. We are confident that the uh, two people we arrested yesterday are responsible for his murder. Or are they? When prosecutors looked at the case, they felt they had the goods on Jonathan, but not enough to convict Sabrina. It was a blow to homicide detectives who were forced to send Sabrina home to the comfort of her children and family. Sabrina Lamone has not been charged. She is a citizen. She's free to do what she wants when she wants. Coming up. The lovers turn on each other in a he said. Divorce was not something very appealing to her as an option. She said. I never wanted to believe that Jonathan was the one that did this. In a knockdown, drag out courtroom battle. I believe she told Jonathan to shoot Rob. And the verdict is in. We, the jury, find the defendant, Sabrina Limon. 
a cougar and her God-fearing young firefighter. Bonded in love, partnered in crime. Or so thought the Kern County Sheriff's Department. Detectives were forced to kick Sabrina loose, but put the screws to her forbidden lover, Jonathan. We spoke on several different occasions for several hours. Jonathan Hearn fully expected to spend his last dying days behind bars. And he knew there was only one thing he could do to change that. He had to turn on his beloved Sabrina Lamone. And for Jonathan, nothing says I love you like throwing your girlfriend under the bus. He provided the details of their planning and preparing. He allowed us access to his cell phone. And then a move that would afford the young evangelical some mercy. I offer him my broken-hearted and genuine apology. Jonathan struck a plea deal. What he pled for is 25 years and four months in prison in exchange for that testimony against Sabrina. I was shocked. I was shocked. They were intent on making sure that she took the blame for this. He is calculating. He's not naive. Interrogating Sabrina was like trying to crack ice with a feather. That's unbelievable to me. Like, I, I seriously feel like there's no way, there's no way that he would keep him all that. Jonathan's going to tell me that you started all this and you talked him into it. Well, that wouldn't be true. Robert's dead because of you. Make no mistakes about that. That is something that you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life. It's time to get off the pot. If you don't have anything for us, I think we need to get you to jail. Join the rest for conspiracy to commit murder. Three years after the fatal shooting of her husband, Sabrina's case goes before a mostly female jury. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The star witness. We do have Mr. Hearn still on the stand. And once the floodgates opened, an astonishing, calculating, cold-blooded, made-for-TV plot would emerge. She asked me how, how I thought would be best, and we discussed car accident and fire and quickly skipped over those and arrived at poisoning. Their choice of poison? Pudding laced with arsenic. Crime scene photos show bottles of arsenic found in Jonathan's trash. I experimented with that on a neighbor dog who had caused me considerable issues in the past and put it on some, some meat. The dog never bothered Jonathan again. Sabrina then put some of the tainted pudding in Robert's lunch and sent him off to work. But the lovers chickened out at the last minute. She called Robert. She had told him to, to not eat the pudding because uh, I think she said that she told him the bananas had gone bad in it. Sabrina still insisted Robert die on the job at the railroad because the medical care in the area was substandard. But perhaps there was something else. If uh, Robert Lamone was killed in the line of duty, that she would be also getting money from BNSF. Not to mention the $300,000 life insurance payout Sabrina stood to collect. You searched for how long for a life insurance policy to pay out. Is that correct? It appears to be, yes. The question that comes up in every spousal murder, wouldn't divorce be so much more simple? Divorce was not something very appealing to her as an option. She expressed that he would honestly rather be dead than divorced. Losing her would essentially kill him. I had a frank disgust for him that was developing and contributing to me being very dismissive of his life, ultimately. Jonathan proved his disdain for Robert. The night he disguised himself, got on his motorcycle, drove 85 miles, then ambushed an unwitting Robert Lamone. After he fired the first shot, what happened to Robert? He fell seemingly mortally wounded, then headed up into the office to follow through with the previously discussed plan of overturning the, the interior of the office and making it look like a, a robbery. I really didn't want to leave him if he wasn't entirely dead. So I went back around the backside of the truck and um, quickly fired one more shot at him. The public servant turned public enemy had killed a man and in a call to Sabrina after the fact, appears convinced he was guided by a higher power. He's working through me to the street. He went to God there all the way. He is a God there all the way. He knows what he's doing. He, he knows the work that he's doing. 
When it came time for Sabrina to take the stand. Well, I was um, protecting my image. She tried to explain why she lied to cops. I didn't want to put my affair into a murder investigation. I never wanted to believe that Jonathan was the one that did this. Prosecutors reminded Sabrina of a certain significant prayer she and Jonathan shared after Robert's murder. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O oh God, you who are my God, my Savior. When you read that verse, what did you think? What my memory recalls, um, I remember Jonathan reading that um, Psalms 51 to me, and I don't think I was um, following along. Um, I was... Um, distracted and when cops asked Sabrina if she knew of a man with a motorcycle possibly named John she gave them the names of two other Johns who were acquaintances of her husband Sabrina suffers from ADD she's not been on medication for it she's not extremely articulate in fact she has difficulty in communicating her thoughts she's a high school dropout so why let her testify because insists her attorney she's innocent Considering that Jonathan Hearn is a psychopathic killer, I would tend to believe Sabrina more than him. But it only got worse for Sabrina's image when her formerly best friend, Kelly Bernatine, the friend with benefits, took the stand. Are these wild sex orgies that you're going to the river to have? No. It was usually Sabrina and I, and then we would go have sex with our husbands in the same room, but not together. Kelly denied having a private affair with Rob, but blamed his murder on Sabrina. That she killed Rob. She didn't kill anyone, did she? I believe she did. You believe she actually went and shot Rob? No, I believe she told Jonathan to shoot Rob. If Sabrina is convicted, she'll get more prison time than the man who pulled the trigger, 25 to life. Whatever the jury decides, everyone present is to sit quietly and calmly. It's judgment day in Kern County. We, the jury, find the defendant, Sabrina Lemont, guilty of a felony to wit, murder of Robert Lamont as murder in the first degree. The crime was done with premeditation and deliberation. There was no mercy for Sabrina Lamont. As to count one, murder in the first degree, the term by prescribed by law is 25 years to life. Then to remand to the Department of Corrections, we're adjourned. The court is supposed to find somebody guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, and I've, I've never seen a case in where there's more reasonable doubt than this one. Do you get any sense that she has any remorse for what transpired? Not at this time. Do you forgive him? Not at this time. I can't yet. A husband and father dead and gone. A wife and mother facing life in prison. A religious firefighter who sold his soul to the devil. And all for what? You don't invite evil into your home like Sabrina invited Jonathan by bringing him in this relationship to destroy that family.